Welcome everybody, my name is Roy Bandari with TalkConno.com and today we're joined by the Vice President of Capital Developments, Matt Young, uh, and we're t here today to talk about Azora Condominiums. Matt, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we know it's always tight this time of year, especially with new launches going on and so. Well, thanks for coming, appreciate it. So today, obviously, we're gonna talk about Azora, uh, but I do wanna touch on Capital Developments. You guys have uh, had a very, very busy last 12, 18 months. The last time we sat down, uh, we were talking about E2 Condominiums. Um, talk us through that launch. That one was amazing. Yeah, that project was fantastic. Um, we launched at the end of 2017, and uh, we had a lot of hype and a lot of momentum, and it ended up being a great success. I think we sold it out. Uh, I think the entire project got sold out within uh, a few months um, before we released our penthouses. So uh, it was a fantastic project. Yeah, we love that one. We appreciate you guys supporting the project. So obviously on the sales side, uh, you've been busy, but I, you've also been equally as busy on the, uh, the development side. Mm -hmm. um, I know you guys have completed a couple of projects and um, are well underway on a couple of others. So just give us an update on, on where you guys are at. Yeah, so I mean, we've been actively building our pipeline over the last few years. Um, one of the biggest things we purchased was Bloor and Dufferin, which is a seven and a half acre yep. site at the southwest corner of Bloor and Dufferin, which will be you know, over a million and a half square feet of, uh, of area and six or seven different buildings. Um, it's going to be a very exciting master plan. And then we also purchased a property uh, at uh, 11 Yorkville, which is going to be yep. coming out later this year. Um, and then Azura was another one that we purchased. And we've got a few other things we're working on right now, too. So uh, we've been pretty busy. Amazing. So I do want to transition into Azura. Uh, that's why we're here to talk, what we're here to talk about today. Um, for Azora condominiums, uh, before we dive in, give us sort of the uh, bird's eye view. Uh, where is it located? Um, how many stories? How many suites? Give us, the, give us the overall picture of what we're looking at. Yeah, so the address is 15 Holmes Avenue. It's yep. just south of Young and Finch, just off of Young Street um, in North York. And the area is a really, really dynamic area, very active, very vibrant. Um, the site itself is a four-minute walk to the subway, and it's also sitting directly on uh, what's going to be a new public park. So it's a really, really great location, um, and it's accessible to every area in the city very quickly. So, uh, Amazing. Yeah. So if you're an investor in the market today, what would be the top three reasons that, in your mind, uh, an investor would look at Azura condominiums? Well, like with any real estate, I think location is always most important. So we think we've got a really amazing location with that access to the transit and with the park on site and in such a great growing neighborhood. Um, the other thing I think is really important is the actual product you're buying. What is the unit layout? What is the, what is the space you're going to live in? So with this building, we yeah. tried to maximize uh, the most efficient units. We actually looked at all of our best-selling units from past projects and took the best units in each category and plugged them into the floor plate, and that's how we built our floor plate. And then um, the other thing that we tried to really do is maximize the amount of self-use in the building. So by doing it the way yeah. we did and tapering the building to the south, which you'll see, uh, we ended up getting 74% of the units with a south view, wow. which is fantastic. And everybody knows south views in Toronto are always um, you know, the, the most in demand. So that's what we tried to, to do on this one. And then the other thing that's really amazing about the building is the amenities. And you know, with the amenities you know, comes a lot of things. The location is also an amenity. The yep. access to the park is an amenity. But the amenities within the building are stunning. Um, it's one of the nicest buildings uh, I've ever been a part of. All of the amenities on the ground floor have double height ceilings. It's going to feel very luxurious when you walk through the entry, walk through the lobby. Um, and we've got amenities for everybody. So we've got a kid's playroom. We've got a fantastic gym. We've got uh, multiple different party rooms, a chef kitchen, uh, an outdoor terrace, dog washing stations. There's something for everybody in the project. So I think you know when you buy a unit in this building, yeah. you're going to have a total offering that really stands out from the market. Awesome. So the, just to... Recap what you just said. So the three sort of big items you would talk about would be location, the suites, mm -hmm. and the amenities. So Absolutely. I want to I break those down a little bit one by one. First one, location. You mentioned the subway. Um, it's interesting to me that you, know, you mentioned a couple of the other sites that you guys have been working on, and I don't think it's a coincidence that they are all very transit-oriented. Yes. Um, that's obviously an important factor. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, I mean, every single project we look at, there's a few key criteria that would make us want to work on a project, and having access to transit is the most important thing for us. So everything we've done has had access to some sort of higher order transit, whether it's subways, Crosstown, LRT, both, um, that to us is a priority. 
Interesting. Yeah, that's great. So I know uh, like this area, uh, and it's sticking in the location uh, pocket right now. Um, another thing that I sort of noticed in this area is that it seems to be an area that's crying out for this sort of modern um, downtown style vibe condominium. Mm -hmm. Is that something you can speak to? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when, when we bought the site, uh, you know, we kind of did a, a walk around the neighborhood and we immediately noticed that a lot of the buildings felt a little older, yeah. you know, maybe design was less of a focus. Um, and everything we do, we try and really deliver a whole package and that includes really great architectural design. So um, as we worked on this building, that doesn't mean that the function of the, the building shouldn't be, you know, as efficient and, and uh, as functional as possible. But I think you can do function with beautiful form as well. And that's really sure. what we tried to do here. Um, and it was actually similar to when we did 155 Red Path, trying yeah. to, you know, the whole campaign there was bringing design to Midtown. And yeah. it's very similar here, bringing design up to North York. For sure. Yeah. It's uh, it, the location, obviously, being a Young Street, right on Young Street, you mentioned a few minutes to, to Finch Station. Mm -hmm. Like all, This whole package really starts to come together, and you, yeah. it's, it's clear why you guys put location at the front. So mm -hmm. I do want to transition to the suite mix. Um, floor plans are obviously uh, can make or break a project. We've seen projects l launch recently in otherwise great locations, otherwise priced very well, but if they don't get the floor plan piece right, that project can very quickly fall apart. Um, there's a few off the top of my head that I can think of that they had all the pieces there, but the floor plans weren't what they should have been. Yep. And as a result, the project didn't, wasn't as suc successful as it should have been. So what we do see more and more is that the developers that do pay attention to this excellent floor plan design, and we, and we all know what makes it a good and a bad floor plan, but putting that at the top, um, we see more often than not that, that it does result in a successful project. Is that something you can, again, just touch on, on, your, on your side, from your side of the table? Yeah, I mean, look, that is the product people are buying. Any yeah. purchaser who's buying in a building, they are buying a layout. They're buying a unit. They're buying a home. And it has to be functional. And in some cases, projects uh, maybe have uh, not the best floor plans because of the overall development design yeah. or other constraints that were happening. Um, we always try and prioritize product design. That is the most important thing for us. Um, so, you know, we, so in this project, we, we actually spent a huge amount of time analyzing all of our past projects. What were the floor plans that sold? You know, we had a large enough site that we had some flexibility in terms of how we could design our floor plate. So we looked at all of the past projects we did, what designs sold the best, uh, what was in the most demand. We've spoken to agents like yourselves yeah. who have given us great feedback, and we've taken all of that, internalized it, and kind of built a product mix that makes sense uh, for the market. Um, and I think, honestly, in this building, there isn't a single bad floor plan in the entire project. Awesome. Um, you mentioned the, the unique sort of tapered design where it gives every... Not every, 74% of the units? 74% of the units have a south view. Have, yes. have a southern exposure. Yeah. Um, and there's an amazing rendering of one of the uh, units that are further north in the building, mm -hmm. overlooking the, the, I call it the Hollywood view of Toronto, yeah. that downtown skyline view. And, and that's something that a lot of the units will, will be able to get. Yeah, I mean, that, that rendering that we released is actually the northeast corner unit. Right. And it's an <clears> actual uh, 3D model of someone standing on the balcony. And you can very clearly see as the building kind of tapers in, you get this broad yeah. kind of south view. It's not just someone standing over the balcony to look south, but you actually get a clear picture of it. So uh, that was completely intentional. And, you know, we just know in Toronto, it's a, it's a market um, where maximizing sunlight sure. is really important. And uh, if you can offer more south views, um, you're basically offering value back to the purchaser. So that was a priority for us. For sure. Uh, anything else on the suites you wanted to touch on that we didn't, we didn't highlight? I guess the other thing is, you know, uh, having suites that are really efficient is important, I think. And, um, you know, when, when, whether you're an investor or even an end user, I yeah. think everyone today is more cost conscious. Um, and delivering really, really efficient suite layouts and also very livable layouts is important. Yeah. So in this case, you know, every single uh, unit in the building has bedrooms on windows. Perfect. And every single unit in the building has balconies. And these are just, you know, everyday things that sometimes get taken for granted. And yeah. we wanted to make sure that that was included in all suites. So there was really nothing that was unsellable and nothing that was unlivable in the project. Um, and then even in terms of the 
sizes of the units. We want to yeah. make sure that they were designed in a way to maximize the efficiency. So we're re literally looking down to inches on floor plans, where to put walls, where to put windows, and gaining inches to make sure that you know everything is sized appropriately and sized efficiently so ultimately we can bring end prices down and, and make it more affordable for people. A lot of the times we, we refer to that as building the, the building from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Focus on the floor plans and then build the envelope around it as opposed yeah. to the, the opposite which is design the exterior and then hopefully make the floor plans work. So. Exactly, that's exactly how we thought. Transitioning to number three which you talked about was amenities. So. Uh, a couple of key amenities that we see time and time again are number one, gym, mm -hmm. increasing probably probably the most used amenity in any any building, um, and then number two is uh, an important uh, that we're seeing an increased importance in uh, is a grand lobby. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to us about those key features first before we transition to all the other all the other stuff that you guys have? Yeah, well, we we totally agree on uh, on the lobby. I think especially today, you know, the lobby is really the entrance to your home yeah. and uh, it needs to feel substantial. And when friends come over, family comes to visit, you want them to feel wowed and impressed. And, sure. you know, for us, uh, a couple of things we did to try and do that. Number one, we raised the ceiling heights in the lobby substantially. Excellent. So it's double height ceilings. It feels very, very grand. Uh, number two, um, the entire uh, exterior elevation of the lobby is a beautiful curtain wall design. So it's got this amazing yep. kind of jewel box look when you kind of drive up to the building, which is exciting. And then the other thing is the interior design is stunning. I think IVI did a fantastic job on the interior design, giving it a very luxurious mm -hmm. but warm feeling, something that's not alienating to, to anybody, but is also going to stand the test of time and, and, and feel classic uh, in years to come. So we're very, very excited about how the design came out. And you guys have seen the rendering. Yep. I think it, uh, I think it I think turned it out, out well. Really so uh, yeah, that's what our plan is to deliver. Excellent. And then in terms of the, the gym, you know, again, we, we know that gyms are always one of the most used amenities yep. in any building. And we try and deliver gyms that would mean anybody in the building can use it. And nobody would need to go get a fitness club membership uh, if you live in a capital building with one of our gyms. So we have full weight areas yoga areas, full uh, cardio areas. We've tried to add new different things into gyms, uh, whether it's TRX bands or, or uh, things related to um, you know, other kind of fitness yep. trends, whatever is kind of popular at the time. And, uh, and every single gym we've done is kind of followed that same uh, guidelines. So if you look at 155 Red Path, which is For now sure. closed and occupied, the gym is one of the most beautiful gyms I've seen in the city of Toronto. And 150 Red Path will be very similar. Art Shop has got one of the most amazing yeah. gyms as well. And we try and kind of replicate that. That's one of the standards we put in every project. Um, awesome. And we've done that here as well. So you mentioned that there was a whole laundry list of amenities. So which, which are the ones that are exciting to you outside of the, the ones that we already talked about? Well, one of the really unique ones is uh, this kids' playroom, um, which is really interesting. And one is that a shift because of demographics? Are you seeing more families buying and having that? For sure. We did a lot of research early on, and we found a lot of younger families uh, were living in this area. And a lot of the single-family homes in this area are quite expensive. So right. trying to offer product that uh, young families could actually raise children in, I thought was really important. Um, and one of the really cool things about it is that the kids' playroom is uh, located in between the party room and the gym. And we actually have vision glazing between the party room oh, and nice. the gym into the kids' playroom. So the idea, you know, and people with their busy lifestyle today, you could go get a workout in, uh, bring your child down, they could play in the room, and you could still have sight lines on yeah. your child while you work out, and they could still be safe in the, in the playroom. Or if you're renting at the party room and you've got friends and they're all bringing their kids, there's a place to put the kids and a okay. place for the adults to, to have their event. Um, so we tried to make it very livable. It wasn't just about plugging in yeah. a kid's playroom wherever it could fit, but how does it function within the whole project? Excellent. Yeah. You mentioned something uh, while you were talking there, but uh, one of the things that we love for, an, uh, for our investors is when you see a situation, and you, you glossed over it, but what you said was um, the single-family residential homes in the area are very expensive. Mm -hmm. When you've got that situation where you've got a high-rise in an area which is otherwise unaffordable for, for many, many people, you're able to get into this area at a more affordable price. And as an investment, um, that kind of product is always something that we look for. We see it time and time again, and uh, it's, again, one of those key features that we love to find for our investors. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, just what, as we wrap up now, um, have you guys, where are we in terms of price point in this, uh, in this condominium? 
So we haven't officially priced uh, the building yet. We are early, right? We are still very early. It's so. still very early, um, and we haven't priced it yet. But what I'd say is every time we launch a project, we always try and leave some skin on the bone. We, we never try and squeeze every drop of juice out of the orange yeah. uh, because we really try and build loyalty with uh, the agents, the brokers, and purchasers. Yeah. And we've had a lot of purchasers who have purchased in all of our projects, and it's because they've seen us deliver, and they've seen us leave value on the table, um, so they feel like it's a good investment. And that's something we'd rather be known for than, than trying to squeeze every uh, ounce out of the project. So um, while we haven't priced it yet, we think when we do come out, it's going to be a very, very competitive project. And I think the overall package is going to really stand out compared to anything else in the market. And we think it's going to be the best value in the market as well. Excellent. Yeah. So if our investors, our clients, our buyers are interested in purchasing unit at Azura Condominiums, what are they got to do? Well, I think you know the obvious thing is get in touch with you guys, and you guys have supported our projects from day one, and and uh, we've always had a really good relationship. And you know the way projects are sold today is yeah. is uh, brokers who have relationships and who have access are able to get in early, and uh, and you guys will be able to do that. So anyone who wants to get access should reach out to you guys, and uh, and they'll hear more once we know. Great, thank you very much, Matt. We're really excited. Thank you. Appreciate.